Okay, so I'm going to talk about Ardra Nakshatra today. Ardra Nakshatra is the star of metabolism. That's the main point that I'm going to be discussing today because it's uh, a point that I've never heard discussed anywhere else. But if you read the Taittiriya Brahmana, the Nakshatra Sutras that are in there, and if you think about everything else that that Ardra symbolizes, then you will you'll probably you know agree with me by the end of this video. So let me let me start to explain that. All right, so let's start with the sutra itself. Rudrasya bahu mrigayava prasta dviksharo avastat. You know, I'm not a perfect Sanskrit speaker, but that's uh, what it is. So rudrasya means the uh, asya that is the case for of. So the of rudra. Um, bahu is in the case of dual, so two arms. Bahu means arms. So the two arms, the arms of rudra, um, the arms of Shiva, the arms of the howler, the arms of the roarer, the arms of the god of tempest. The arms of fire as like a transformative destructive agent. So Rudra itself means fire as a destructive, you know, agent. Rudra was related to Shiva or to the sun. You know what I mean? How the sun is able to destroy um, darkness through its light. Uh, so right away, like, um, keep that in mind for metabolism. And then um, Mrigayava is a really fascinating word that like... <sighs> I don't even have, like, I'm still figuring out all this, this sutra myself, but um, Mrigayava can mean, it can mean, Mriga means an animal, like a deer or a wild animal, and then Yava can mean, just means grain or barley, um, and there's even like a, a, a yoga called the barley corn yoga too, that goes by that name, a similar name. Um, so Mrigayava is a, means like grain and, and animals on one hand, you know what I mean? Like, like, like animals and grain so it's that from above the parastat means like above and also implies like what you kind of rely upon um para meaning above like what's above you and what's relying on what you're dependent on and then um parastat and then vikshara uh viksharo viksara it means like like uh acidic like caustic melting away is uh the translation they give but if you look it up it can even mean like soda water so it means like uh, that corrosive acidic caustic thing so that's what digestion is like your bile your digestive juices are the that vikshara you see what I'm saying so um, it and then it produces that from below so like on the one there's more than one way you can interpret this um, but the main interpretation that I've not heard anyone be able to anyone see or explain at least maybe they have um but i haven't seen it is uh that it is the star of metabolism because it's basically saying rudra needs food he needs like you know grain and and animals or the products of animals or something and so that he can produce the caustic he can digest it he can create bile and break it all down and destroy it you see like rudra is shiva the destroyer metabolize it put it all where it needs to be transform it into your flesh into your body a strong healthy body like the sun like shiva like rudra and yeah so that's like what that star is doing it's it's a star that um grows through destruction, you know what I mean? Like it grows through uh, destroying and metabolizing your food. So Ardra is like always given all this like negative association of like like butchers, like uh, you know, like morticians or like people that work around all this destructive dead stuff. But we don't realize that you need to destroy every day when you need to eat. So you need to call upon Rudra's force to eat. So basically, um, if you have afflictions in the nakshatra of Rudra of Ardra you might not have a great metabolism or you might have metabol metabolic uh, problems, you know what I mean? And this can be an indication of that. And likewise, people that I see with really strong Ardra stuff going on have really, really good, uh, you know, metabolism, really good digestion. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things that I've noticed about this. Um, excuse me. <clears throat> I myself am a Ardra Nakshatra, and so I, I have I have a lot of experience with this star. It's my moon, my Janma Nakshatra. Um, 
Ardra is, uh, you know, related to Rudra, and so it can get one involved in, you know, Shiva-related yoga paths. And I've talked about before how I got initiated into Kriya Yoga, a Shiva, a very heavy Shiva yoga path. Um, when I was young, I was like 20. I didn't even know what, any much about it at that time. It was kind of thrown upon me. Um, and my moon is in the fifth house uh, in Cancer, and it has to do with good past life um, karma. And in, fifth house is initiations and everything, and Diksha and all that. Um, what's also interesting I can say about with my chart is that the moon is in cancer there and uh, so that's also indicating dairy and I do really really well with eating like tons and tons of dairy <laughs> you know what I mean or I don't ever have problems with that with digesting dairy um, because of a really strong moon in this Ardra so I can just crave I need to break down dairy basically <laughs> and I feel really good of course I only eat like good quality you know, dairy and stuff like that. It's very important to do that if you're, especially if you're living in the West. Um, if you're living in India, you probably have great access to great quality dairy. Um, so there's like, there's that quality of Ardra, but then there's also, you know, it's symbolized by a teardrop. So we all hear about that. We think of the teardrop. Ardra is associated with storms and um, tempests, and he's the god of storms and tempests. Um, again, he has to do with the, a storm is like this dark, cloudy, dark, heavy thing, and so he he clears that out. He he he, you know. He transforms that. He metabolizes that into something better. You see, so uh, Ardra is a star that you really want to call upon when you need to transform things in your life. We you need to metabolize your life. We you need to lose weight. We you need to get your fire and your agni stronger. When you need to purify, you know what I mean. So that's the other thing, is that if Ardra is the star of tears, tears are purifying, right? Or sweat, you know, sweat. Sweating comes through heat. Again, the acidic, the, the heat, the fire of Shiva. Shiva was this god of, of tapas and the greatest austerities, which create heat. The word tapas, um, pretty sure the word tapas relates to heat, but now I'm like, my mind is blanking. But anyways, yeah, you get what I'm saying? He's this planet of fire um, and metabolism. And so crying is also like a destructive thing so if you have uh, afflictions in ardor you might not let yourself cry enough maybe if you have really healthy stuff going on in ardor nakshatra you'll be able to just like release your emotions and just have a cleansing cathartic cry every now and then you know what i mean which is good for a human being whether you're man or woman um, if you're not a perfect enlightened being, then there's probably some stuff that you're upset about and you're maybe not, maybe holding it back, you know, and you maybe need to just let it go and cry. That's what Shiva does. Whenever people have like a really cathartic episode and they cry so much and they're sad and all this stuff, they feel so good. That's that purifying feeling of, of Rudra, you know? Um... So there's just this really heavy emphasis on needing to purify. And so that's one thing that you'll hear, like the normal traditional explanation of one of the things I always heard about Ardra was that they're the type of people who will go through a major like purifying process in their life at some point. Um, I did have that. I was just kind of like a young skater and I was always into knowledge and stuff. But then within the course of one year and like mainly one summer, I switched from doing whatever I wanted, skating, partying, to becoming like a hardcore yogi, vegetarian, raw food, going to bed at nine, you know, just ch totally changing my lifestyle and everything. Um, and it stuck that way the whole time. It just was the right thing for me. Um, so there's this really, yeah, they can have these big cathartic transformations and that can indicate, that can have to do with the crying, the tears, the emotional release. I think especially because in this age, Ardra is in Cancer, um, the sign of emotions. Then there's also this emphasis, it, maybe if it's in Gemini, it's more of an emphasis on purifying the body uh, or the mind or something. Um, and also, if you have a, a planet, a thing going on in Ardra and Gemini, then it's a lot more involving the arms, because Gemini is a sign of Bahu, the arms. And you notice that they use that word Bahu in this uh, sutra. So, again, like Bahu symbolized the arms are the doers, and they, were, they have to do a Gemini. Gemini is all about doing. And so, Rudra is a powerful, you know, being and powerful energy that wants to do a lot. Again, that's like metabolism, is doing a lot, like breaking things down, moving things around in the body. And so anything that deals with like uh, acid, uh, acidity, corrosiveness, 
uh, toxic things, things that are like destructive to organic matter, um, even things that are like biting or burning, maybe cutting would be more critica, you know, but um, maybe even some of that, uh, you know, anything involving like wailing and crying and weeping and big emotional releases, you might want to look to uh, Ardra. Say you want to elicit that reaction somehow, say you are a healer or something, then you might want to start a practice or a group thing on the star. You know what I mean? When the moon is in the star. Uh, the nakshatra is, to me, the best use of them is with Mahurta. You know what I mean? With the growing things, because the nakshatras are the wives of the moon, the shakti of the moon. The moon's what grows. Um, it's the plant, the principle of growth. And so as the moon goes through his 27 wives, he's just deciding like what he wants to grow or what's, you know what I mean? Or they're growing things for him, you could say. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to increase your metabolism, you could start a, a health practice or a, start taking an herbal supplement that increases Agni. You know, everybody would think Ashwini, but you might also want to do it in Ardra and it might start well then. Um, then there's that connection of dogs and coyotes and howling. You know, R Rudra is the howler, the wailer. He was created by Brahma, and then he was just immediately just wailing, what am I, who am I, what is this, you know what I mean? And um, so I've had really wild experiences with coyotes and the moon and some interesting um, ex experiences. I don't care to share it, though, um, too personal, but then dogs... This whole howling at the moon is this is this symbol or this omen of what am I? The moon is the ego mind. Like, what is this? What are you? Why can't I have you? Why am I here? It does kind of symbolize um, self-inquiry and this this fire um, of, of inquiry. Um, also, dogs have a profoundly strong metabolism in terms of all the animals that, you know, Ardra could have been related to. Dogs will eat anything, you know what I mean? Dogs can eat trash and all kinds of things and just be fine, you know? So that, that same kind of idea, dogs are not pretentious. Rudra's not a deity of pretenses. He's, uh, I want to explain more on that in a moment. I hope I remember to, but... He's not about pretension, you know, Shiva and Rudra is just this, he's like got crazy dreaded hair because he doesn't comb his hair, he doesn't care, he's just sitting there, he could be naked, covered in ash, he doesn't care. He represents that pure raw consciousness, pure spirit that's just doesn't, doesn't give a damn, you know, it's just in everything, it's, it's in the murderer, it's in the saint, it's the same, you know what I mean? So Shiva doesn't see them as different. And, um... Yeah, so uh, she was just focused on the metabolism, the, the goal, the fire, the process. And that's the thing is that all the nakshatras are given a shakti as well. And so Ardra and nakshatra has the shakti of, uh, I forget the Sanskrit term, but it means like the power to exert effort or the power to sweat, basically. Like the power to sweat and cry and, and you know what I mean, and put your uh, effort into things. Um it's like the power to, to experience pain towards something, I think, is another way you could interpret it. Or the power to aspire after. And that makes sense because you don't have a strong metabolism without being hungry. You know what I mean? So this is like a, a star of like thirst and hunger and everything. And that kind of, again, relates back to the myths where Brahma created Rudra and he was like, who am I? You know what I mean? He was wailing and he was angry at Brahma. And, you know, then... Brahma told him to go and, you know, meditate on the self and God and everything to pacify these storms, and uh, and he did. So that's like, also, I've heard it explained, like, Vic explained it well, like, Ardra is like, a uh, a uh means not in Sanskrit, or un, so not ru, uh, Rudra, which means wailing. So the Ardra is the star of pacifying, like, going through this process to get to the point of not wailing, you know what I mean? Having, having gone past that point of the the hunger the wailing the the process um yeah so it's really there's really a lot of interesting um ways we can look at this star but yeah i really noticed that people with good health healthy like a planet's healthy avashtas and things like that going on in the star really good digestion really good metabolism fairly good eating habits or they'll get better over life and then the opposite for planets that are more afflicted
Um, and then also, like I was saying, anything that has to do with soda, you know what I mean? Like, um, <laughs> if you ever are involved in soda, that can actually be related to, to this star. Also, vikshara means like the pouring out or the liquid waste. So it has to do with like defecating and excreting um, and things like that, removing things from you that way. So it could also maybe, I haven't looked into this, but you know, if maybe people have problems with that, there could be something going on with Ardra. Um, vikshara means pouring out. Um, like releasing in liquid waste. Um, so yeah, we can see, I hope now you guys can understand that there, that Ardra has to do with this process of like hunger and fire and metabolism and then the waste that that produces, um, the caustic or whatever, like I was saying. Um, and so it is also a, a star of like hunting and gathering um, as well as like, I guess like, you know, like, like peeing and, and all that and defecating. Um, and then sweating and crying is like another way we're releasing. You see what I mean? Um, that's another way that we're kind of like tearing things off. So the teardrop or the sweat um, of Ardra makes sense there now. You know what I mean? And that's how we remove the caustic. That's like the sweat and the tears is how we remove the toxins from our body. You see? So when we go out and sweat, like it's been really hot here right now. The sun is in Ardra next chapter right now. Today is June 20th. We're almost at the summer solstice <clears throat> and it's so hot out there right now you know what I mean and so it's like you cannot get past this toxic uh, or this uh, detoxing is just natural for a human being if they're in nature and not you know inside on the internet all day um, yeah so this is kind of why like Ardra and Rudra brings in that quality of crying and then it also can have to do with hunters um, okay so now that's pretty much all I had to say about metabolism. So I hope that this makes sense to you guys. And I hope you guys enjoy um, examining Ardra in the context of metabolism. And I'm going to try to do more um, videos on all the other nakshatras as well when I get time. But I have to wait till I really feel like I understand them um, in a way that's fresh and, you know, not just repeating what other people have already said. Okay, so now there is a second point to Ardra. And... Um, so, Rudrasya Bahu, Mrigayava, um, Prastad, Viksharavstad. The Mrigayava is the, um, it means hunting, gathering. But here's what's interesting is that it also can just mean hunters. Um, it's, it's really hard to find that word to find in the Monier Williams dictionary, but you can find all the other similar roots. Like, uh, I'll show you the picture of the different roots in a moment. Um, it's probably going to pop up right now when I edit it. Um, but it basically can mean a hunter. And so what it's also saying is that Ardra or Rudra, the two arms of Rudra, need hunters so that he can destroy them. <laughs> because, uh, because, yeah, if you think about it, like, yeah, Ardra or Rudra is this, the, the, the deity of destruction and stuff. And in Vedic culture, um, it's not considered good to kill animals. It's considered to be the most unholy thing, aside from, like, a ritual sacrifice um, or needing to survive. Um, or perhaps a certain medical procedure that you need that involves an animal product like in Ayurveda. But there is, it's, in general, Vedic culture was an, a totally vegetarian culture. Well, there was like a, there was a really, really interesting myth that this connects back to. Daksha is this ceremonial guy who likes, he, he's like one of the major kind of like sons of Brahma and this creator figure. And he's all, he kind of symbolizes like the, um, the ritualist, like being obsessed with ritual, having like a really inflated ego, thinking you're great because you just do these things. Like all throughout the myths of Hinduism, there's basically this very, very big theme of like, you can think you're great because you meditate, because you do rituals and all these things, but it doesn't matter at all if you don't have your inner, if you're not humble, if you're not loving God, if you're not sincere, if you're not surrendered to God, seeing God in everything. If you think you're better than anyone because of what you do spiritually, you're automatically at the bottom. That's every myth of, in, you know, the Puranas, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is talking about that basically. Um, it's, you know, I'll, I'll go, <laughs> I could go into that all day if I want to, sorry. Um, the, so the, like Rudra was actually even called Pashupati, which means the the animal protector. It means like the the protector of the animals or the lord of the animals, and the caretaker of them. 
So you can see why that is now when you think about this sutra. Um, and, you know, Rudra, again, is Shiva, which is like this really very um, detached from worldly life type of yogi. He's off in the Himalayas, you know. He doesn't participate in the ritual sacrifices. He has no worldly aims he wants to get. So he would never sacrifice animals or he would never eat animals. He's only focused on the self. And so what's fascinating is that like there's this amazing myth that like most of you probably know about. You should go and learn the whole story if you want. But basically like the guy Daksha who's the essence of like pomposity and being an egomaniac and thinking you're great just because you do rituals and or whatever. I'm a Brahmin. You know what I mean? Like you, you see all that going on in, in all religious traditions. And he thinks he's great in this priest class. So he's going to do this great sacrifice. And he invites everyone except Shiva because Shiva is not fit for polite society and this sort of thing. And yet Shiva's wife is like, I'm going to go because she's actually the daughter of Daksha. And he's like, I, Shiva's like, I don't think that's a good idea. <laughs> um, but he goes, she goes anyway. And when she gets there, uh, Daksha is like so rude and so insulting to her and to Shiva and all this stuff that she can't bear to even be his daughter anymore. And she self-immolates and just burns herself up and just leaves her body. She's like, I can't even bear being in a body that is connected to you anymore because of your arrogance. And destroys herself through the fire and tapas. And then she, this surfaces in Shiva's consciousness at some point. A teardrop falls or as some, some of the myths say a, a, a sweat of anger drops. And that drop falls down to the earth and actually creates Virabhadra, the avatar of Mars, just so you know. Um, but that's not what this story is about. So anyways, um, that that sweat of Ardra, that teardrop, you see, like that's symbolic in this myth. All of a sudden, that avatar of Mars comes, Virabhadra, and he's like, command me. And he tells him, go and destroy the sacrifice. He goes there. And according to some of the myths, like Shiva literally like takes Daksha's head and chops his head off on the very block that he chopped off all these animals for this sacrifice. So it's sort of like a really cool karmic thing where like that Daksha probably was protected from bad things happening to him in the sacrifice, except for if he was killed right on that block where he had killed so many innocent people. Um, so Shiva's the one that did that. Rudra's the one that did that. So Rudra destroys the hunters, the arrogant people you know what i mean the egotistical people that's what rudra's job is is to destroy them what's really fascinating is that one of the ways he destroys them is he lifts them up so if you read the piranhas if you worship shiva he can actually be a deity that gives you a lot more than vishnu but he gives it to you to take it all away to like he gives you he makes you like rich and powerful so that you finally got rich and powerful so that you are finally still miserable, realizing that being rich and powerful was not what your life was about. It's not the goal. It's not the source of happiness. So then you eventually fall back down and you want to find God. You know what I mean? But you can't want to find God if you still just want to get laid. You know what I mean? Or something. And so uh, it's really fascinating. There's a lot of myths where demons and asuras will worship Shiva, get all these powers become really strong and think they're going up and then they're going back down really but it ends up being in a way good for them and they somehow get to the feet of Lord Vishnu and Vishnu does the final deed and kills them and gets them self self um, gets them liberated anyways go read all the Puranas and stuff if you're into that um, but we can see that Rudra and Ardra this star is all about like finding what's necessary to destroy and destroying it, you know what I mean? And so that and tra or transforming it. So that can have to do with clouds, like dark stormy clouds and the rain and how the rain purifies everything and how he's the god of the tempest, but he's also the god of the you know, the the destruct the powerful fire, you know what I mean? The metabolism and in a way like the sun as well. Um and he's also, you know, the one who kills the hunters and the protector of animals. So this is what's really fascinating is that Arjuna Nakshatra, if you have a lot of stuff going on in Arjuna Nakshatra, you'll want to protect animals if it's a really good placement. You might be like a wildlife uh, activist or a um, someone who's like an advocate for wildlife um, or is at least vegetarian or vegan or something like that. So I actually see that going on a lot with the Arjuna Nakshatra individuals. And, an, and another really interesting thing about that whole uh, how Ardra is like not worldly and Rudra is not like in the world real, or like he's 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 just, you know, off in the distance. He's like Shiva wants to be kind of isolated from the world and doesn't care for polite society and worldly stuff. 
Betelgeuse is the actual star that's Ardra, this, this, the astronomical name. And Betelgeuse is a beautiful, bright star um, in Orion's belt. It's like the armpit. Oh, which is sweat. You know what I mean? Like, I like see all the sweat stain. I'm just now making that connection. Um, and I sweat a lot from my arms, if you notice in videos and stuff. I try to wear black because maybe that's my Ardra coming out. But whenever I go to speak, all of a sudden, or when I do readings, I'll start sweating a lot. It's really interesting, but only right here. Um, nowhere else. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, Betelgeuse is... Betelgeuse is the star that would be the brightest star if human beings could see all wavelengths of light. So I think a lot of Ardra people feel that way. They feel like their light's not fully seen, so they just don't bother to do be too invested in the world and what they're seeing, and they just kind of remain where their light's not as, as visible. <clears throat> yeah, so now that we have considered what I've been saying, you can really understand how, uh, wow, you know, Ardra really is this star of hunting, and uh, hunters and animals and uh, the destruction of them or their or the metabolism, all these different things. Um, it might also be like, this is another way that I've thought about approaching these sutras. There's another other way too that I'm not even ready to talk about yet, but like this, this way is um, basically, it might mean that from, uh, from below, um, the avastat is like this um, mundane physical function that the star or the deity is doing. So it's like on the fun on the mundane physical level, Rudra and Ardra is metabolizing and is creating hunger and is creating acid and destroying. You know what I mean? And um, and causing all the, and relating all those processes. And then perhaps on the higher level, the heavenly Parastat from above level is the hunter. He represents what you're hunting, what you're seeking. You know what I mean? What you're hungering for? What kind of knowledge you're seeking? What are you trying to bring into your life? Just like how Rudra was, who am I? You know, like uh, self-inquiry, all these things. Like what are, you know, so it has to do with the spiritual path and Shiva and all these things have to do with, you know, Rudra, the howler, howling at the self. You know, like what am I? A coyote or a dog howling at the moon. You know what I mean? So it's hunting. Um, also dogs were, and, you know, dogs were used involved in hunting in ancient times uh, a lot more. Um... And then you can also remember that this is a Jiva nakshatra. It's a nakshatra of um, animal living beings. Living beings, humans, and animals are under the Jiva category. There can only be three. It's Mula, the plant kingdom, the mineral kingdom, Datu, or the animal living being kingdom. So this is, again, a Jiva star. Doesn't that make so much sense? Because it has to do with hunters, hunting, animals. Yeah, so that's really cool. Um, and like I've said before, the Jiva nakshatras are nakshatras that deal with submitting or dominating. They're more territorial. You know, they're about um, being in control or finding who else is going to be in control. And that has a lot to do with the process of hunting. Um, and now one final cool connection that I have found is that if you study anthropology and stuff and astronomy and all cultures, almost every culture has seen... The Orion constellation, Betelgeuse, and where this is at, as the hunter. You know, like the Orion's belt and everything, the image of the hunter is what Ardra is. It's literally, like I was saying earlier, the armpit of the hunter pulling back the bow, using the arms, exerting effort to shoot the arrow to the animal he's hunting, some other constellation, I forget, um, maybe the Leo or something. I don't know, I can't remember. But that's that's like in every ancient culture, the hunter. You know what I mean? And so Ardra, Rudra, uh, Pashupati, all these things, you know, the hunter, all these things connect back to Ardra Nakshatra and the ancient um, Vedic culture. So I thought that was really cool and probably a good way to um, wrap up this video. Thanks, you guys. Take care.